Hey there. So I'm back from my trip to the Midwest and i um, kind of tired of researching tax stuff. So I decided to have just a little bit of fun on my way back. Uh, I decided to check out some lounges. It's kind of fun for me to do a lounge crawl. So here's a lounge crawl that I did of four lounges. Almost got to six. I should have gotten uh, at least the fifth one in there that I'll tell you about at the end. But uh, here's four lounges that I uh, checked out this past weekend just for fun. So, of course, when you're hanging out in Chicago, the most direct route back to Portland would be, well, through JFK, of course. So um, I ended up taking a flight from Chicago to JFK. And the primary goal was simply to check out the Centurion Lounge at JFK. But I ended up checking out four lounges total for the day. So that's the map. It was a long flight home. Luckily, I did get first class coming home. It made it a lot more uh, tolerable. So first, we'll start off with the lounge in Chicago. Hey there. Hanging out at uh, Ordi's Delta Sky Club today on my way to JFK to check out the new Centurion Lounge. I wish you guys could see the background. I've got some straight footage, but this really cool jet watching here, sitting in the lounge. Um, I enjoy it rather much. And the staff here is great. It's a little smaller than most of the Delta lounges, especially compared to like Delta or the Atlanta lounges. But uh, the food's the same. It's, it's good, good drinks, good staff, and uh, it's a really pleasant experience. Plus, it's got some of the best plane watching from just sitting in your chair eating that I've seen. So I'll um, get you some information on the Lounges in JFK, hopefully in a few hours. Take care. I thought you could see behind me very well, so I thought I'd do this quick shot of the traffic that was flowing behind me uh, while I was sitting there. It's a lot of great plane watching at this lounge. The first lounge I went to in JFK was the American Express Lounge. No, not the Itatad or Itahad. It was the American Express Lounge. The Centurion Lounge there, that was the target that I wanted to get to. Uh, this is a pretty nice Centurion Lounge. It's large, it's two levels. It's got the standard motif. It's got lots of nooks and crannies, quiet places, couches, conference rooms to work in, and all great. Uh, like most Centurion Lounges, but that was not really why I wanted to come to this particular lounge. In this lounge, there is a lounge inside of it called the 1850. This is a speakeasy style lounge hiding deep inside the American Express lounge. I've been wanting to check this out since I saw it. Now, inside I really didn't take a lot of pictures or get much video footage because, well, it's a dark lounge and I didn't want to bother people. Like a lot of lounges, this has a typical drink for it. That's, and for them, it's the espresso martini. It's um, quite tasty and they do a good job making it. Now it does have a full bar and a very great competent staff running it. It's pretty small and you do have to wait a little bit to get a drink because usually there's one bartender and that bartender is keeping busy to say the least. If you've ever spent any time in a Centurion lounge you've come to expect good food and this lounge did not disappoint. Had a nice collection of food including some really tasty desserts right there. I enjoyed that meal. It was quite good. And they did let me bring it back into the speakeasy so I could have that martini and enjoy this fine food. Another unique th thing to this lounge is the Equinox area where you have self-massage services where you can work with little machines on your back and also get your own 15-minute massage. After the massage, I went back to the main bar area, had a couple more drinks, all complimentary of course. Uh, met this very nice bartender who uh, told me about her friend working at the Virgin Atlantic Lounge and I should probably go over there and check it out. So, of course, I did. So, the clubhouse by Virgin Atlantic was kind of a fun surprise. I actually didn't realize it was there and didn't know that I could get into it. I should have researched JFK better. It's very laserly focused on the uh, Centurion Lounge. But it was a fun, interesting little clubhouse. It Obviously a fun motif. It had a great bar and some really kind of funky designs throughout there. I enjoyed it. Uh, the food selection was not open. You had to order off a menu. It was good. I had a nice cheese plate. 
Then back in the bathroom area, they had this, just this funky hallway with light changing. It was just fun to walk around in this club. It also had a shower, which is always nice. Uh, after a long day of travel, it's good to get showered off. I didn't take advantage of any of these places as far as showers go, but it was there and I was happy to see it. Now, after I walked out of this place, I saw the Emirates Lounge. That's definitely not on my American Express card, but I thought I would peek in. But it was closed, so I was denied that lounge. So after hanging out in Terminal 4 for a couple hours, checking out the Virgin Atlantic and the American Express Club, I did pop over to Terminal 2, which is where my flight was coming out of. So I thought I would save an hour or so to check out that lounge. As it turns out, it was a fine lounge, but I should have spent more time in Terminal 4. Apparently there is a much larger America, or sorry, Delta Lounge there. And the folks that work the Delta Lounge over in Terminal 2 said, I really need to check that out. So I'll put that on my list for what to go to next. So I am in lounge number four for the day, back in the Delta Lounge, or back in a Delta Lounge, in Terminal 2 of JFK. I kind of like this lounge. It's crowded, but like all Delta Lounges, it's got the same solid offering of food and booze, all comp, except for the high-end booze. Let's, um, one of the fun things about this lounge, if you're into feeling of superior, is you're actually above every all the action downstairs looking down on it, which is kind of funny. I'm glad I'm not down there. I'd much rather be up here. You can see this lounge is a lot less crowded. And yeah, I pan quickly to avoid catching anybody in there. So I always enjoy coming back to a Delta Lounge. They're, uh, they're great offerings, solid food, solid drink. Very nice place to wait out for a flight. This one has showers. I might try them out. I'll let you know. Well, I didn't try out the showers, but I did uh, grab some video footage of them. They're pretty basic. Um, you can get towels there. There's me. Hi. And uh, it was fine. I did, however, of course, check the food out. And they had their typical pork rice meal for dinner. It's, I've seen this a lot. It's a pretty tasty. One sort of downside of this lounge, if there is an anything that could be downside was the internet speed. Usually when I'm in a Delta lounge, I'm impressed with the internet speed, 100 plus all the time. This one was really slow. And I'm really falling down on the job, frankly, that I didn't check the speed in the other lounges. I think I was just in vacation mode. So there you have it. Four lounges, across two airports, and one long day, and then a very long flight back to Portland. And uh, that was not a bad flight, liked frequently on Delta, great service. And thanks for watching. Again, just kind of a fun video after all the heavy tech stuff I've been talking about. Enjoy.